Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at the gas station problem. The problem is that we have a car with an unlimited gas tank. We're given an array of gas and an array of costs. Each index in the gas array represents the amount of gas available to fill up with your car at a certain station. Each index in the cost array represents the amount of gas that will be used when traveling from this gas station to the next. Our goal is to determine whether it's possible to start at any of the gas stations and complete one round trip. If it is, we need to return the index of that starting gas station, and if there isn't, then we can just return a negative one. The problem statement is a little bit complicated, so let's go over an example. Let's say we get this as our input for gas and cost. We can visualize the input like this. We have five gas stations, each with their respective gas values, which is the amount of gas they can give your car. Then we have roads connecting them, which would have the corresponding amount of gas that will be used when your car is traveling. Our goal is to find whether we can start at any one of these gas stations and have enough gas throughout to make one round trip. So let's take this example. We start on the first gas station and we start off with six units of gas. It then makes the trip to the second gas station, costing us five units of gas, which means we now have two units left in our tank. Upon arriving at the next gas station, we are given one unit of gas, so now we have three units. Now we attempt to make the trip to the next gas station. However, since this trip requires nine units of gas, but we only have three in the tank, we run out of gas along the way, leaving us stranded. So this means we can't start at gas station zero and make a full trip. But this doesn't eliminate the possibility that we can start at another gas station and still make a whole round trip. Let's say for example we start at the index 3 gas station, which gives us 11 gallons to start. Upon traveling to the next gas station, we use 2 units of gas, but we also get 4, leaving us with a total of 13 units of gas in our tank. Now we loop back around and travel back to the first index, which uses 5 units of gas. But then we also get to refuel for 7 at the index 0 station, which leaves us with a total of 15. On the next jump, we use 5 units of gas and refuel for 1, leaving us with 11 units. On the next jump, we use 9 units of gas, but we don't get a refuel at all. And on our last trip, we use 1 unit of gas, which leaves us finishing the round trip with 1 unit left in the tank to spare. So now that we know if we start at this index 3 gas station, we'll be able to complete a whole round trip. So this sort of proves that the gas station you start at does in fact matter. Because we weren't able to make a trip starting at index zero, but if we started at index three, we were. Now that we hopefully understand the problem, let's look at a brute force solution. The brute force solution just simulates the car driving and then runs the simulation trying every gas station as a starting point. So first thing is our function definition, which takes two arrays, the gas and the cost, now we have our outer for loop, which is going to try every possible gas station as a starting point. We then have to initialize a tank variable to represent the units of fuel in our tank. And then we have an inner for loop simulating our car visiting all the gas stations starting at S. In order for us to smoothly simulate the looping mechanism of the car, where the car goes past the last index and comes back around to the zero index, we can mod I by the amount of gas stations and we can then simulate the car moving from one gas station to the next by adding the gas of the required station and subtracting the cost. Now if the tank at any point goes below zero, we know that we have been left stranded midway through a trip from one gas station to another. This means that this starting point is no longer valid. The way we can keep track of this is by using a possible variable, meaning is it possible to continue driving? We flip this possible variable to false and break if the tank goes below zero after any trip. If possible ends up true at the end of the simulation, it means the gas station never fell below zero, which means that it's possible to use this starting point to make a round trip so we can return S. If we try all the simulations and none of them work, it means that there's no possible way to make a round trip regardless of which station we start at, so we return negative one to symbolize this. For time complexity, worst case is that we run n simulations with each gas station as a starting point. Each simulation takes n steps in itself, so we have n squared running time. For space, we don't use any extra space, so that's constant. 
All right, now that we have discussed this brute force solution, let's move on to the improved solution, which runs in O of n time. As always, in order to improve our solution, let's look back at our brute force solution and see where it's wasting time or where it could be learning something. So when our brute force solution ran a simulation, as soon as the gas tank became negative, it stopped and moved on to try the next station as a starting point. But this is inefficient, and in order for us to understand why, we have to look at what makes the car stop. Let's say for this example that the car starts off at index 0 and is able to make it to the third index gas station. But after trying to make it to the fourth index, it runs out of gas. Let me color in the successful trips the car was able to make as green. And we'll color the last trip, which was the trip where the car ran out of gas, as red. Once the brute force solution realizes it can't make this trip, it starts over simulating with this gas station as the starting point. But this next simulation is useless and wasting time. Here's why. Well, we already know that these three gas stations and trips were successful, which means comparing our fuel accumulation to our fuel consumption, we were at some kind of surplus, or at the very least, we were breaking even with exactly enough fuel to make every trip. This is because if we were at some kind of deficit, then our car would have already run out of gas sometime earlier. So this means on the last trip, because we ran out of fuel, we were in some kind of deficit. So trying this position is useless because we already know that despite the three positive trips, this last trip was so much of a deficit that we weren't able to complete the trip. So if we can't make the trip starting at the very beginning, we also can't make the trip starting here at index 2, or at index 3 or 4 for that matter. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, you're wrong. What if I can start here on the index 1 gas station, and the reason why it might be successful is that this first trip here in blue takes up so much fuel right off the bat that if we don't make that trip initially, that might allow us to make the trip at the very end there in red, which we weren't able to before. Well, here's why that reasoning isn't quite correct. For this first trip, we know that we're able to make the trip, so we know that we had to run a surplus or at the very least break even. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to make the trip right off the bat. This means from our second gas station, our tank must be zero or greater than zero. And if our tank is zero, then this starting point at the second index is just as bad as the starting point at the first index. It would be as if the first trip didn't even matter. And if the tank is positive, then starting at the second gas station is even worse than starting at the first gas station because we were actually able to run a surplus and get some extra gas in the first trip. In either case, we still won't be able to make that red trip at the very end. We can extend this logic to starting at the third or the fourth gas stations to see that starting at either of these is a waste of time as well. So what does this mean in terms of our algorithm? It means that we know if we run out of fuel, say at some ith gas station, all the gas stations between it and the starting point of the simulation are bad starting points as well. So this means we can start trying our next gas station on the i plus one station. So hopefully now you can begin to see how the O of n solution is going to take place. But before we jump into our code, let's discuss one more thing. Say in this example, we skip over the previous stations and try our simulation on the i plus one station here. How do we know that when we make it back around to here, whether or not our car can make the rest of the trip? In other words, when we have stopped, how do we know our car can make the portions of the trip we have already traversed? Well, what we can do is we can do a pre-processing step to figure out if there is even a possible path out there before we try to simulate with our improved algorithm. If there isn't a possible path at all, we can just skip our simulations altogether, and only if there is do we move on to the improved simulations. In our improved simulations, we can sort of think in terms of a process of elimination. For example, in this case, let's pretend we for sure know that there is a valid starting point somewhere. So we start simulating, and all of a sudden on this trip here, we run out of gas. Then we can invalidate all the previous gas stations as bad starting points and restart our simulation here. Now we continue simulating, and then what if we run out of gas again here? Well then, we can invalidate all the points before this as starting points as well. Now we continue along, and let's say we successfully make it back to the beginning. Then, we know for sure that this point here is a valid starting point, because all the ones before it are invalid. Now you might be arguing that some of these ones ahead could be the valid starting point, and this one here is not guaranteed to be the valid starting point. But I argue if those are valid starting points, then this one must be as well. The reason being similar to earlier. If we successfully make it, say, to this one here, 
then we know for sure that the trips from the starting point up to this point total up to either a surplus or at least break even. And if you say that this gas station is a valid one, then the car is able to make it from the starting point to this gas station. Then it has to be the case that this gas station is a valid starting point too. Okay, so now that you're hopefully convinced this algorithm will work, let's code it up. We have the same function definition as before. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the first thing we need to do is determine if there will even be a valid starting gas station. If there isn't, we can just return negative one, but if there is, we run our improved simulation. So how do we check if there's a valid starting gas station? What we can do is we can calculate the deficits and surpluses of gas at each gas station. I'll call this array diff for difference. Now we sum up all the surpluses and deficits. And if the total is negative, it means there's a net deficit, so we won't be able to find a starting gas station. So if that's the case, we just return negative one. Otherwise, we run our improved solution. Our improved solution follows the idea we just discussed. First, we have starting and tank variables, both starting out at zero, because we're gonna start simulating with index zero as the starting point with zero units of gas in the tank. Then we run a for loop through the two lists, updating our tank the same way we did in our brute force solution. If at any point our tank falls negative, it means we failed to make a trip. So in that case, we move the starting point to I plus one and reset our tank to zero and we continue simulating. And finally, when our simulation finishes, we return whatever the starting was on. And that's all there is for the code. For time complexity, we can see that worst case, we have three linear passes. Another linear pass using the sum function, which internally loops through and adds everything up. And our final linear pass runs our modified algorithm. That is O of 3n, which is just O of n. For space, this algorithm actually uses n space to store the diff array. But I hope you can easily see how we could just use a variable and calculate this diff total on the fly for a constant space solution. So now that we've discussed time and space, that's really it for this solution. So to recap, in this video, we discussed the brute force solution and an improved solution. The code for both of these can be found on the Knapsack website, which I'll link in the description. As always, if you still have any questions about the solutions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer. If you found this video useful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel, as all the support helps me to continue making videos. But anyway, thank you for watching and good luck on all your interviews.